Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I'm continuing um, my series of videos on Hurricane Dorian and uh, basically on how climate change is making hurricanes more dangerous. So, of course, the, the most obvious thing is that hurricanes use hot water as their source of energy. If the sea surface temperature is warmer than 26.5 degrees Celsius, then a storm moving over that water will gain energy and therefore gain strength. The warmer the water is, the more evaporation there is, the more of that, the more that water vapor, that moisture can rise up by convective lifting inside the storm, inside the hurricane and build, build strength. So that's the key thing. Obviously climate change is making the sea surface temperature much warmer. Um, so one would expect to have stronger storms as a result. Also, the, the warming of the ocean from climate change is not just on the surface, it's penetrating deeper and deeper down into the water column. So when there's a hurricane moving over the water, it uses up the energy on the surface on the, on, of the water on the surface, and that water is replaced by water that comes up, uh, that's upwelled from below. So if the water down below is also very, very warm and above that 26.5 degrees Celsius um, threshold, then that warmer water from below will continue to increase the intensity of the storm. If it's colder water down below, below that 26.5 degrees Celsius threshold, then that colder water coming up will actually take energy away from the storm and the storm will weaken. So that's why the, the stalling out of this Hurricane Dorian over Grand Bahamas is a, it, it, it's really an unprecedented situation. And the storm has been weakening o over time as it's been pinned to the Bahama Islands. So basically it stalled, it had, had zero forward velocity. It basically sat in place over the, over the island, just north of the island for a day, day and a half. And that would be bringing upwelling of water and the water is shallower, of course, near, near the, the island. Um, anyway, it brings up water and, you know, and it, it, you know, when it started bringing up, you know, the longer it sat there, the more of the hot energy it had taken out of the ocean. So the cold water upwelling started to decrease the, the um, strength of the storm. So it went from category five to category four to three. Um, the eye, the eye basically, you know, first of all, when the storm hit, the eye was circular, then it started kind of wobbling. If you look at the images and getting larger and then you know, there was some sort of eye wall type replacement, whether it was a full one, I don't know, but then, then the eye basically collapsed down into a very, very small um, size as the, as the hurricane just kind of pegged and just sat, you know, pinned, if you like, to the Grand, bah bah Grand uh, Bahama Islands. So this is really unprecedented uh, behavior, unprecedented stuff. So, you know, the other, um, so let's have a look at, uh, you know, the, the, this paper, which actually talks about how these hurricanes are becoming more dangerous. Um, you know, how the, the nature of these hurricanes is, 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 is changing significantly. So I'll just look at the, the key points um, from this paper. So basically, um, you know, these storms, um, you know, tropical cyclones, it basically, there's a small atmospheric disturbance located in or near a tropical ocean, okay, near the equator in the case of Dorian, often to the, just to the west of Africa. You know, if the water's warm enough um, and the, the atmospheric conditions su are support the moisture and uniform winds, there aren't, there isn't shear, there isn't a change in winds with, with um, elevate, with altitude, which can then pull apart storms, okay? They maintain their compactness and they can, strengthen, so they become a tropical depression. Trop so they go from tropical disturbance to tropical depression, to tropical storm. And then if the winds rise above 74 miles per hour, they be it's termed a hurricane. And you go up through the different categories of hurricane. So the first thing is, are these hurricanes becoming more frequent? Generally, the warmer the water is, the more heat energy is available, the higher the potential for the storms to develop. So it seems reasonable 
But basically, so what's happening actually, what the observations show is that storm intensity is increasing, but the frequency of storms is, is, is basically either decreasing or remaining unchanged. There's not a big difference in the total number of storms in a given year, okay? So since 1985, there's been an average of about 80 tropical storms formed each year around the globe. And the variance on that, it ranges from a low of about 65 to a maximum of 90. Okay, so in, so in terms of the frequency of occurrence, there's no discernible trend in this global number of tropical cyclones. It varies from 65 to 90 with a mean of about 80. Okay, um, but there is a large increase in the number of category four and five storms and there's a decrease in the number of category one and category two hurricanes. So since 19, so here's a study and I'll show you, I'll show you the titles. I'll show you, I, you know, I'll click on each of these studies and show you. Most of them are open source, but the study basically shows that since 1975, there's been a substantial and observable regional and global increase in the proportion of category four to five hurricanes of 25 to 30% more category four, category five hurricanes per degree Celsius of human caused global warming. Okay, so that's a big deal. That's a very, very big deal. Okay, and are hurricanes intensifying more rapidly? That's another question. So rapid intensification is an increase in wind speed of at least 35 miles per hour in 24 hours. So slightly more than a mile per hour gain in the wind speed of the hurricane per, per hour over 24, um, you know, say one and a half or something. 1.5 uh, miles per hour increase times 24 hours, that would be 36 um, increase. Okay, um, and so this, we've had this, um, you know, looking at Harvey, Irma, Maria, and Michael in 2017 and 2018, we've seen a num large number, we've seen more and more storms getting rapid intensification. In fact, um, from 86 to 2015, a study showed rapid intensification increased 4.4 miles per hour per decade. Okay, uh, and this was attributed to a change in the, in, in, in a being, the oceans being in a warmer phase, um, defined by the, or, or, or uh, measured by the Atlantic Meridional Oscillation cycle. Okay, but then a, new, a more recent study showed that global warming is playing a role. And they simulated storms and they found rapid intensification is outside the realm of just internal climate variability. So basically, warmer world, more intensive, rapid, um, more intensive, um, rapid, in, more rapid intensification of, of, the, of the hurricane. Are hurricanes producing more wind? Okay, well, there's more, there's stronger hurricanes. There's more water vapor in them. They can be even larger in size. Um, so it makes sense that they would be producing more rain. But the other key thing is that they're moving more slowly. So the rain that they produce is falling more on um, more smaller, more regional locations than it would be if the storm was moving faster, sweeping by a region. So all of these things that mean that these hurricanes are producing more rain. Generally, the increase in rainfall follows the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. So for every one degree Celsius or 1.8 degree Fahrenheit increase in temperature, the atmosphere can hold 7% more moisture. That's its saturation. Okay, uh, there was a paper here about increasing heat content in hurricanes, saying that the convergence of moisture into a storm not only leads to higher precipitation, but greater intensity and growth. Okay, and Hurricane Harvey, a number of papers about Hurricane Harvey of how it produced 60 inches, five feet of rain in 2017 in southeast Texas because Harvey basically stalled out, moved a mile per hour, two miles per hour, and it stuck around for a long period of time. And the return interval of this, of a rainfall this intense is about once every 9,000 years. Okay, but many different studies show that um, the attribution 
study showed that a significant amount of rain can be traced to human-caused warming. So human-caused warming worsened the amount of rainfall by anywhere from 15 to 20 to 38 percent. Okay, um, and there was a calculation that there was a six-fold increase in the probability of an event of that magnitude since just the late 20th century. So it's, you know, what was one in 9,000 years is now much more frequent than that. You know, a six-fold increase that, you know, so it's a much more common event now than it would be before in a colder climate. Okay, Hurricane Maria inundated Puerto Rico, causing huge problems there. And the probability of rainfall of Maria's magnitude increased by a factor of has increased by a factor of five in the most heavily impacted area. Now, forward speed of hurricanes, okay? Um, a 2018 study showed a 10% global reduction in forward speed of tropical cyclones since 1949. And even more concerning because of the impact on flooding is the height and slowdown detected over land areas. So 21% um, in the Western North Pacific, that's 21% global reduction or, or reduction in forward wind speeds in the Western North Pacific and 16% slowdown in the, you know, in the forward speed of the tropical cyclones in the North Atlantic. Okay, um, will hurricanes become more common in the future? Okay, um, and this, you know, it was looking, a study was looking at the wind shear because if wind shear worsened, then that would uh, chop off a lot of storms and stop their growth. But it looks like wind shear is actually going the opposite direction, and that's also contributing to, a, that will likely contribute to an increase in the frequencies of storms. So in this study, there was a global increase in storm frequency projected of between 9 and 23% in the Atlantic Basin by the end of the 21st century. Okay, but there's still a lot of research on this. The intensity, you know, 85% of all damages come from category three, four, and five storms. A hurricane with 150 mile per hour wind speeds has 256 times the damage potential of a hurricane with 75 mile per hour winds. It's a highly nonlinear dependence on wind speed. Okay, um, so it, there was, um, in this simulation, uh, there was an increase in average cyclone intensity, precipitation rate, and the number and occurrence days of very intense category and four, category four and five storms. Um, a 20%, 28% increase in category four and five storms globally. A 335% increase in the Northeast Pacific and a 42% increase in the North Atlantic. Okay, so, you know, um, a different study showed Category three, four, and fives would increase by 20% globally and 29% in the Atlantic uh, by 2081 to 2100. Okay, so what about rainfall? Of course, more intense storms, moving slower, you know, global rain rate increase of 14%. Okay. Um, the study on Hurricane Harvey showed that hurricane rains of 20 inches in Texas will evolve from a once in a hundred year event at the end of the 20th century to a once in 5.5 year event occurrence by 2100. Okay, and then intensification, we covered that basically. So the damage um, is, is going to be huge. Since 1970, the global population exposed to tropical cyclone hazards has increased threefold, and that's expected to increase over the next few decades. Tropical cyclone damages adjusted for inflation are rising by about 6% per year uh, since 1970. Okay, the vast majority of deaths are caused by the most lethal storm systems. More than half of tropical cyclone related deaths in the US since 1900 have been caused by just three storms. Again, storm surge is the, the, the biggest factor, okay? Um, and, you know, it goes, there's lots of lots of information here, lots of papers. So, you know, you can click on any of those links in this paper and you can get the peer-reviewed uh, articles that then, that talk about the details um, of the studies, details that I've, I've been reporting on. Thank you for listening.